Good morning everybody. This is a quick little tutorial on how to use the virtual classroom feature. Now I'm not an expert on this for sure. You definitely ask Dr. Nook who's done a lot more of this than I have. I'm sure he's so busy he doesn't have time to do something like this, uh, but I'm pretty good at this so maybe this will help some of you for Monday when, as you know, our classrooms are closed, right? We have to use this virtual classroom setup. So let's go ahead. So step one, go to the, go to Brightspace, you know how to get there, and go to the class that you have to lecture in. And we'll use, uh, we'll use my CVP, or we'll use my, my GIGU class here, endocrinology class. Okay, so go there. And then the next thing you want to do is go to the drop down menu under more. And there it is, a virtual classroom. So click on that. Okay, that'll load up. And while it's loading up, I should say you do need some kind of a microphone to make this work. I'll put a picture up here uh, of the one I use. I've been using these for years and years. They're really quite inexpensive. I think they're probably around $20 now. You can get them at Best Buy. Uh, but you can use any type of microphone. Uh, you know, and you should. it's a headset, so it's got speakers and a microphone. I'll put a copy of it up. It works really good. You just plug it into your laptop. Uh, and let me show you this, too. So once you plug it in and make sure it's working, now this is Windows-based. I don't have a Mac. But if you go down here to the little speaker and right-click and go to Recording Devices, I want to make sure this is working. And you can see it. It'll pop up right here. It'll say microphone. This is a Logitech USB headset. And you can see test one, two, one, two. You can see it working here. Uh, if it's not for some reason, you can right click on that uh, and make sure it is set, uh, make sure it's not disabled. So actually, I can set that as my default communication voice or device. And there you go. For playback, I can go over here. And there it is again set for default device. If you're not sure, you can go uh, make sure, make sure it's not disabled. Okay, so that's a little tiny bit of tech support. So I know mine's working. So awesome, let's set up, uh, let's say it's, uh, uh, I don't know what time is it, it's 8.18. Let's say your class is gonna start in about 20 minutes or so. You definitely don't wanna do this when you walk in the door here. Um, and you can see I've got a test down here. Normally this wouldn't, in fact, let's just get rid of that for right now. Or no, that's okay. I'll just leave it there. Um, so it's, it's really easy to use. So step one, active meetings. We don't have any meetings set up. So first thing we do is we have to set an active meeting, right? So let's go down here, not to this thing. That's the little help button up there if you need help. But down here where this big red plus sign is, if you hover over that, it says schedule a meeting. That's what we want to do. Uh, so click on that. Uh, you can make a title so the students have to be able to pick this meeting out. So we'll just say uh, GIGU Monday lecture. Okay, and you, you don't have to worry about a time or any of this stuff. Just hit now. That's good enough. That doesn't mean it's going to start immediately, but you'll see how that works. You can set your duration to whatever you want. Mine's two hours, so I'll hit two hour duration. Don't worry about the repeat. Definitely have to hit this button though, because you want to record it so it shows up down here where that thing I was going to delete, test three, is where your recorded meetings go. The students are able to access this these recorded lectures and they can review them over and over and over again which is something pretty cool about this. Okay so tick the automatic record lecture, uh, publish the recorded lecture, that has to be ticked as well, it's ticked by default uh, because if you don't hit that it won't show up under recorded meetings and allow external part, uh, participants like if you had a guest speaker so just leave that unticked, we don't, not going to worry about that. This is just emergency, right, to get us up and running. And then make sure you invite the entire class. That's all there is to it. Click Save, left click on Save, and lo and behold, there's a sign that comes up, GIGU Monday Lecture is create, created. Uh, and there it is, right? 
So that's step one. Now the weird thing about this, you would think you would be able to upload your PowerPoint slides, but you can't do that uh, just yet. Uh, so that's kind of a, a weird thing. At least, yeah, at least you can't. I haven't figured out a way to do it yet. So now the, the class is maybe 10 minutes away or so. Uh, so all you need to do now is get this thing to run. So how do you do that? There's no obvious button, but if you go to Actions right here, Actions, and left-click on the three, remember, three little dots always means there's something hiding down there. Oh, there it is. Uh, we can edit the times if we wanted, but I, I just clicked now. So um, hit Launch. So let's launch it. Left-click on Launched, uh, and there we go. So it's got kind of the setups. There's some numbers to call, like if someone's calling in and they... Maybe the student doesn't have a headset or something uh, like that or, or whatever. They can dial in and be part of the 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 the, two, the uh, lecture that way. Keep, coaching session. I'm used to saying coaching session. Um, okay. So next step, we still can't upload the down down power or the down PowerPoint slides yet, which is kind of annoying. But let's go enter the room now. So enter the meeting room. That's the next step. So I clicked on that. And you obviously, you have to be connected to the internet, right? I'll say the obvious stuff to make all this work or it's not going to happen. All right now, there's this microphone test. Uh, I, you, I guess you should hit that. So you have to be able to speak, right? You're going to be lecturing, so you have to hit this. So left click on microphone and test one, two. It's like checking your voice. And you and can, you, I can, I can hear, that hear that voice, voice echoing, echoing in, in my, my headphones. headphones. So I'll click so, yes. I you know. You are currently the only person in this conference. Thank you. I'm the only person in this conference. It says that's because I didn't invite anybody. Um, but so I know that when I speak, people are going to be able to hear me. Okay. So now we're ready to go. This is actually the whiteboard which we can draw on and such. But we still have. I mean, if you don't use PowerPoint slides, um, you're actually ready to go. Now here's something, this is a fault with it. At least I couldn't figure out how to make it work. But see my little pointer here? See the red dot? Hopefully, well, I'm using Camtasia, so you will. This does not show up when you make your recording, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so just remember that. I had to go here and click on this, these tools. And let's go over these tools real quick. This is the whiteboard. So if you left click, on tools, it pulls up some tools. Probably the most handy one is this little pencil here. If you click on that, uh, by default, you can you can write. Uh, if you want to get rid of that, this little kind of curved arrow says that's called an annotation, right? What you write, you hit this curved arrow, makes it goes away. You can actually delete all the annotations. I think in an entire presentation, so don't click that button unless you want to erase all your annotations at the end. Uh, there's a multi-user mode. I'm not familiar with that, so just stay away from that. But if you want, you can change the thickness of the the tip of the pen. Let's say, let's make it really thick. See, now it's really thick. It's probably too thick. Probably the second one was good for me. And then you can also change the color by left-clicking here where it says colors. Okay, let's can make it a blue color or whatever. I guess that's a little thin. I might go up one more. Okay, you get the idea. <clears throat> now, when you record the stuff, this stays on the recording, so it's permanent unless you hit that button to uh, to give. Oh, I see. That's like goes back at record. It erases one at a time. If I wanted to erase them all at once, I could click. Yeah, that's right. So this, if you click clear all annotation, it only applies to this slide. It won't clear your entire presentation. Um, so if you're just lecturing with a whiteboard, this is first part of the lecture. You can go to the second slide. This is the second part of the lecture. Uh, and then you can just, I mean, it's almost like you're creating a PowerPoint slide. Uh, and if you want to go back, how do you do that? Well, there's these little back and forth arrows here. So I can go back to the previous slide three, or I can go back to slide one if I want. If I want to jump to three, I can click that little drop down arrow and hit three. So we can do it just like that. But now for most of us, I think we use PowerPoint slides. So now what's the deal with that? So we have to go to this little plus button right here. This is the key. 
So go down here to the left lower corner, left click on that, and it'll pop out some other things you can do. There's breakout rooms. I don't know how to do that. There's a poll. I mean, this is actually a pretty powerful little program here. Uh, but this is the one you want. So upload your presentation. So left click on that. And then go find your presentation. She recommends it, it only works in PDF. But if you just have regular PowerPoint files, it'll convert those really rapidly. I'll show you that right now. Um, so I would click here for browse files. We'll go into my mess here. Sorry for my mess. And we'll go to Palmer. We'll go to GIGU. We'll go to Spring. And we'll go to Lecture Slides. And let's go to Week 9. And let's just grab anything. Let's grab Tuesday. And I'll grab it in the pop. I, I give my students all PDF so they can't manipulate the slides around. Um, but let's just grab a, a real PowerPoint, a PPPX file. That's just a PowerPoint. And this is from PowerPoint uh, 2016, so you should have this exact setup. Okay, so there it is. So that is uh, to be uploading. And it is to be uploaded. It should be uploading right now. So we'll just wait a minute. Oh, maybe I don't have to wait a minute. Maybe I just hit start now. Let's hit start. I think I don't have to do anything more. Okay, now it's uploading. So you got to hit start to upload. Uh, and it's a big file. Uh, but it's, uh, okay, it's converted. So we're ready to go. We're not quite ready. My arrow's still blinking. It's still converting. Okay, so I didn't have to do anything. I just waited until it converted. So it can, that wait that we experienced was because it converted those PowerPoint slides into a PDF. And now we're ready to go. And there's our PowerPoint presentation. And if you click on the pencil here, yeah, you can, you can write on this as you go. Uh, let's look at some of these other tools. And you can play with these, but you can, you can, if you wanted to, you can type text in here. Uh, hello, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, that's the idea. Uh, and there is a rectangle like little thing you can make a box, so you can do all kinds. I don't think probably anybody's going to use that, but there you go, and you can play around with those things. Go back to the pencil tool, and yeah, okay, so you can just go through the slide. I'm ready to go to the next slide. This is annoying too with the program, you can't use your page up, page down, or arrow to the left, arrow right, like you normally can. The only way you can advance the slides is to hit this little arrow. So there's the next slide. Okay, we're just we're reviewing um, BPH, uh, but you know, talk about that, and then if you want to go further, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now what if I student has a question or something, and, and and you want to go to the whiteboard real quick, draw on the board. Okay, you stay right here at your slides. It won't lose your place. You think there'd be a quick button to do this, but there's not. To get the whiteboard back, you have to go down here to the plus sign and left click on that again. Choose upload presentation. And then you can t you can click the, d the default PDF here. That's the whiteboard. I don't know why they don't say that's the whiteboard. But if you click on that, it takes the kind of check out of, out of your PowerPoint presentation. But that's how you do. So click default PDF and click start. And now we're back to that whiteboard that it saved. And let's add a new slide. Okay, I'm a new slide now. Okay, and now let's say we're done drawing on the board. And great, but now I want to go back to my power presentation. We have to do the same thing. And maybe Dr. Nook can chime in if, if, if I don't know, he's probably not got time to watch this. Uh, but you could ask Dr. Nook if there's a quicker way. But if you go to Actions again, Upload Presentation, and then just click your PowerPoint presentation again, hit Start, and there we are, right back to where we were. We saved it right here at uh, slide number three. And then we can proceed uh, proceed with our lecture. Okay? So that's it. 
everything that I've done right here, it's been recording and it's making a recording for your students to, to play back. The other annoying thing about this, uh, there was a way if you go, was it up here? Yeah, there's, let's look at this. So if you want to take a break, let's say 50 minutes has gone by, you want to give them a 10 minute break, uh, you could click leave the meeting. And I thought it would stop, like pause the recording, but it doesn't. Uh, so I experimented with this and there was a 10 minute just looking at this slide. So it doesn't pause the recording just for a heads up on that. So I don't know what the advantage of leaving the meeting is. Uh, but let's say we're done. So now it's time to, to, to close this up. So just don't close the window or it won't save. It has to save in order to render down and become a movie. So let's just go back to the three little dots. Okay, and we're going to end the meeting. It's going to warn you. Are you sure you want to end the meeting? Yeah, it's going to disconnect. Oh, all the users. Let me do one more thing. Sorry. Let's let's not end the meeting. Let's get out of that. Let me show you. Let me show you another thing we can do here. What about the students coming in? So here are the students right here. So if you left click on this little man right here, whatever it is, or little man or little woman or whatever it is, uh, these will be a list of the students who have joined your meeting. And I assume they're going to, the students will will go to the same spot where you opened this virtual classroom. They'll click on the file that you made and they will pop up right here. Uh, and so you can actually see who's here and who's not. If you hit this little, little lasso thing here that says chat, it'll give you a place to chat. You could say, hi, students. And that's where you can uh, communicate with the students if you want. The students also can choose whether or not to have headphones on or to be able to talk to you. I think it's probably better to do it like this, uh, but there is an option for them to be able to talk to you and you can hear them. There's also an option for you to mute them if it gets to be too much. And you're going to have to play around. I mean, this is, I'm just brand new at this, so I don't know all the ins and outs. Uh, but yeah, so that's where they can communicate with you. If you don't want to see the users anymore, you can actually hit the user button again and just you can have the chat up here in case somebody asks you a question. So you could leave this open if you want to see if any questions pop up. Okay, so I think I covered everything. Sorry, I should have done that one first, but but doing the best I can do. Okay, so now we're done. So let's go over here and get out of this meeting. So go back to these three little buttons and we're just gonna end the meeting. Now it's gonna say, are you sure you want to end the meeting? And go, yep, I do want to end it. So I'll hit it. The session is ended, everybody is released from the meeting uh, and now this window is done. So let's go back up here and close the window and the kind of the meeting lobby area is still open. Uh, I don't think you could go back in and restart it. I haven't tried that out, but maybe you could. But we really don't need that either. I'll leave it open though. Uh, if you go back to the main page that it opened, the virtual classroom, uh, we see a we see the lecture here, and so it's not going to show up in recorded meetings yet. It's rendering it down right now, and rather than sit here and wait for it, I will. I'll wait for it and I'll take a screenshot of this and I'll, I'll show you uh, what happens. But if you come back to this, or I think actually if you refresh it, we'll try that in a second here, uh, but eventually it'll pop up right down here and then it'll have like a little clock right here. It take, I think it takes about 10 minutes for these to render down and become viewable. But once they become viewable, the, the student will have a similar view as this and they can go over here to actions and they can actually preview and watch the video. They can download the video. Um, you can see the attendance, I guess, of the video. I haven't even checked that one out. If you want to get rid of it, you can delete it there as well. Actually, I can delete that because that's test three and we don't even need that. So yeah, get rid of that one. Okay, I'm back. So what I actually had to do, I had to go up here and go to another class. I went to G or embryology class uh, and then I came back into it, and then 
uh, I went back to review, back to more, back to virtual classroom, and once it popped up, uh, you could see that there's no more active meetings because we closed that. Uh, but under recorded meetings, there's the one we just made. There's the Monday lecture that's popping up. Now, you can't view it right now. You can see it's grayed out but because it's still rendering down. Uh, so that little hourglass means it's not ready. I think we saw in the other one where I had one, there was a green check there for status. Uh, and so this takes about 10, 15 minutes sometimes. Okay, so that officially ends this little tutorial. I hope it helped, and I will see you guys around.